Hi, welcome back. We will continue solving our maximum subarray problem. So now that we have a good understanding of the problem, we need to come up with a higher level logic and then uh, convert it into pseudocode. So no matter which problem you're going to solve, you'll have one or two main strategies that you will use to solve the problem. So this is the coming up with the logic part. And once you have like a high level strategy, then we have to think about how to convert that strategy into code that a computer can understand. So as you know, a computer take, can take only one step at a time, right? So we have to translate our thinking as humans into something that a computer can execute. So that is step two, where uh, we take our logic and write the pseudocode. And then of course we have to uh, verify whether you know everything is fine and only after completing these steps we will start writing the code in fact this is the most important step and the coding itself should not take much time because once you have a strong foundation in place a strong logic and then a strong pseudo code to convert that logic into code then the coding itself shouldn't should not take much time and you will spend less time debugging okay so now let's come up with a high level strategy so you can pause the video now and uh, maybe think of a strategy yourself if you have not yet uh, solved the problem. Okay, so here's the high level strategy that I came up with. So first let's generate all the subarrays, right, belonging to the array. And then let's uh, find the subarray with the largest sum. So you can see that this is the hard part, right? How do I come up with all the subarrays belonging to an, array, to an array? An array may have like so many different subarrays. But once I have that, then finding the one with the largest sum, it's easy, right? So now let's just focus on one step at a time and then write the pseudocode for that step. So now we have come up with a high level strategy and then we will write the pseudocode. So sometimes what happens is you will come up with the logic, a high level logic, it may, and then when writing the pseudo code, you may, you, you may realize, oh, I've made a mistake. In that case, you can go back and then come up with a different logic. Okay, so how do I generate all the subarrays belonging to array? So for this step, what I will do is, I'll assume that I have no computer with me. So as a human, how will I solve that problem? Let me ask that question and then find out from myself so that I get a better idea to solve this step. So let's say the input is something like one minus two, four minus three, and we want to find the result for this input. How do I generate all the subarrays? So how I would do that is first take all the subarrays having this first element. So we have like one and then one comma minus two, and then one comma minus two comma four and then minus three so sorry one comma minus two comma four comma minus three right so these are all the subarrays which have this uh, first element right and then i will uh, exclude this one and generate all the subarrays belonging i mean generate all the subarrays excluding one so we have minus two minus two comma four, minus two comma four comma three. So you can see that each time I'm adding a new element to the list. And uh, let's repeat the process. Okay. So we have four, four comma minus three. And finally we have three. So this is how I would create the subarrays, right? Uh, if I had no computer with me, I would manually write all these things. So now we have to let the computer do the job for us. And uh, we have to write the pseudocode for uh, this algorithm. Okay, so for writing the pseudocode, uh, you can either write the code directly or uh, write like a code in a made up language, which is, uh, you know, which makes more intuitive sense. So personally, what I would do is, if I'm not an expert in a uh, programming language suited to solve this problem, I will just, uh, I'll just write the pseudocode assuming that certain op operations already exist so that I don't have to focus on the individual details, right? So 
let's uh, see how we do that uh, initially we have like all, all the sub arrays right we want to generate all the sub arrays so have like all the sub arrays and uh, yeah now i have to come up with the logic for this now what i'll do is i'll solve a simpler related problem instead of solving this entire problem uh, finding all the sub arrays i'll just find all the sub arrays starting with one okay so let's just do that first so i'll do for let i equal to uh, zero so you can see that we are adding one element at a time right in each iteration so i have to iterate through this array so I'll do for i equal to zero, i less than uh, array dot length, i plus plus. So the pseudo code kind of looks like uh, JavaScript, but uh, you know I'll make some uh, changes just to make sure that I move quickly so that I'm not worried about the details. Okay, and then I want to get all the elements from zero to i. So zero to i. So this will include you know. Uh, array of 0 and then array of 1 array of 2 and so on until and including array of i got it so this is the sub array and now if i repeat this process increase i in after each iteration i will get all the sub array so this is my overall thinking right now so i'll call this sub array and i want to add this particular sub array to the list of all the sub arrays so push it's just a JavaScript function which will add uh, one element to an existing uh, array. So this is the overall logic now. So at this stage what you can do is now take this logic and write the actual code and make sure that your thinking is right. But sometimes what happens is if there is a error in your thinking itself then it might be difficult to it might be difficult to debug the issue later on. So usually what I would do is, especially when I'm uh, trying to solve a complex problem, I would uh, do a dry run. That means I will execute all these steps manually without uh, even before writing the program. So let's do that. For that, I will use uh, a spreadsheet. And uh, what I'll do is I'll see how each variable changes after every iteration. So just a second yeah let's uh, write down all the variables we have the array itself right Then we have this sub array. Okay, so I, uh, initially in the in the beginning, all sub arrays is like a empty uh, array, and then the array itself is kind of constant. So and what is i? i is zero. And uh, now in the first iteration we have like array of 0 comma 0 that means you know starting from 0 and ending at 0 does not make sense so now I can make some minor modifications right I'll change this um, i to 1 so I want to start with 1 so these are some changes you can make even before writing the code so that your logic is fine so yeah in the first iteration we have like array of uh, 0 comma 1 and uh, let's write it down again the uh, we'll write down the actual value so our array of 0 comma 1 is uh, 1 itself right now we'll move on to the uh, next iteration so now uh, but one decision we have to make is whether this one includes uh, the uh, final uh, element or not whether you know we are iterating from like 0 I mean whether we want to include uh, z, uh, like the only the n minus one or rather the i minus one element or the ith element so that is something that depends on your programming language so 
uh, let's start off with the easy way we will include uh, the final uh, index as well so in that case we can start off with i equal to 0 and then uh, we have array of 0 comma 0 that means starting at 0 ending at 0 so this is 1 and then in the next iteration so we can see we are going back to the uh, next iteration in this case uh, there's already an existing uh, sub array this is uh, constant and uh, we have uh, array of 0 comma 1 so this this includes the uh, 0th element and the first element so the sub array is 1 comma minus 2 and then we add it to our list right 1 comma 1 and then 1 comma minus 2 and then we'll just repeat this process and move it quickly now we'll add i equal to 2 and uh, we want all the elements from 0 to 2 so we have 1 comma minus 2 comma 4 and we will and so on we'll just continue until we reach the final uh, element so now we can see that you can clearly see that we we are generating all the sub arrays belonging uh, i mean having the first element right so this logic seems solid now right so now what we can do is we can go ahead and uh, write the code or we can continue with the pseudo code so we'll just continue with the pseudo code for now okay now that we have solved the simpler related problem which is finding all the sub arrays which includes uh, the first element we'll go ahead with the remaining uh, uh, values right so now you can identify some pattern now that we've solved a very specific case you have to solve the general case so what's the pattern uh, we can find here can you pause the video and see if there is any pattern yeah so the pattern is that you know in the first iteration uh, we have like four sub arrays right for the first value and then for the sub array starting with the second value we have three sub arrays and then two and then one so you can see there's this pattern four three two and one so you can see that each time we remove a particular element we are losing uh, like one uh, sub array so now we have to come up with a pseudo code and uh, another thing you can notice is um, this first uh, sub array has all the values from 0 to i right so 0 0 to 1 then 0 to uh, 2 and then 0 to 3 and here we have like 1 like let's call it 1 to 1 and then uh, here we have uh, 1 2 2 and then 1 2 3 so you can see here the numbers vary from start, starting from 1 until the end and here we have uh, 2 2 2 and then 2 2 3 and finally we have 3 2 3 so this is how the uh, slice of the array varies in uh, the various situations and now we have to like convert our pattern into a particular uh, code that a computer can understand right so how do we do that let's pause the video can you think of a way okay we are back so now we can uh, uh, realize that you know we prob we need another nested loop right so let's modify uh, this uh, loop uh, so this loop works for one particular case right where we have we already have set this part value of uh, i so let's reset it back to uh, zero and uh, now we need to repeat the same logic for different values of the uh, indexes of the array so okay so now let's just change this i to j to follow the normal programming uh, convention and uh, We'll put this in a nested loop. Equal to zero, and then uh, i less than array dot length i plus plus. Okay, and uh, here we we have to set the initial value of j as i itself because 
you can see that in every iteration we are incrementing the value of i here so this is the value of uh, i right and this is the value of j so j changes in each uh, iteration so now that okay finally we have like a good idea right so we are like uh, we are fairly confident that we can uh, solve this problem okay so that completes this step so in the next in the next video we will see how to take this logic and convert it into code so that you know and we'll also develop some strategies uh, where uh, i'll explain how to uh, write code quickly okay so let's uh, continue with the next video